before everywhere, I, I grew up in Connecticut. I lived there for like nine years and then I moved out to San Diego. And I was there for about nine years as well. I lived in Arizona for a year. And then when I was like 16 in San Diego, we moved out here to Baltimore. Um, so we came here because we had grandparents and like family on uh, in Connecticut. So we were back on the East Coast. So yeah, and then I went to high school here. Um, and that's how I met Amy, my bandmate. So I've known her since she was 16. Does that influence maybe the type of music you create at all? Um, growing up in Baltimore? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I think so. We, um, uh, I think the Baltimore as like a whole is a really like do it yourself or like DIT. Like I feel like it's a community where people like to like really pull themselves up and they really make the effort to go out and like really make something happen instead of like waiting for things to happen or they move to another city where they like they assume that just being by associated with something that that'll give them some kind of success but like people here really like to support other people even if the music isn't necessarily associated so I feel like that's really affected Amy and I's outlook on like the way we make music and the way we like pursue music is that um, I don't know success also is like subjective and for everyone it's a different a different level and different feeling for it but I feel like a thing that's defined us or me personally for music in Baltimore is uh, just the aspect of being able to like do it yourself and really like push yourself to do it push other people and have other people help you out and really cultivate a community and not just like an individual attitude where there are a lot of uh, I don't know, there's a lot of community, a lot of togetherness. I think that's really helped Amy and I like cultivate our like ideas and sounds. Realizing we pull from multiple places and not just from a narrow focus. Cool. Yeah, so it was like the end of high school. Amy was in college. It was like when the Wham City there was like a ton of stuff happening here and they were like <clears throat> Like Dan was just like I guess beginning to really, Dan Deacon was like beginning to really like uh, blow up I guess like cultivate a huge like bigger audience across the nation like internationally, and the sh he was like here performing a lot and um, so was Future Islands and like Bosey DJ. <clears throat> so they were awesome to see when I was younger because it was like oh whoa like if you can get a group of people together you can really push a movement or like do something mm. grander than yourself and it doesn't necessarily have to be like something singular to you or and like more about cultivating an environment that you'd like to be a part of than rather than a career or in music or something you know what I mean where yeah. it's like they were able to cultivate like a DIY community where they want to live in and perform in and like be a part of and they would put on like performances and like plays and um like they still even do like Wham City comedy yeah it's still a thing but they were like really influential and just like for Amy and I to be like if you push and you motivate yourself to do it you can be you can be what you want to be you can be here you can make these things happen your friends will support you there's people there to support you and be a part of this with you and if you cultivate like a family you know you'll have like a backbone to be able to do the things that you'd like to do as a musician as an artist as a comedian whatever your like, creative expressive output is <clears throat> and just seeing that when i was like like 18 or 19 and going to these shows where it'd like it'd be I was like right out of high school and like we'd go to these like warehouse space uh, like right across the street from here it's called like floristry yeah um we'd go I'd go there and I would see like Dan Deacon play and Future Islands and there was like OC DJ would play and then like Ear Power was a man from like North Carolina and they would come down and come up to play we... Baltimore is a really amazing place there's a this the government here has a lot to work on and by helping its people I think that the the people here are pretty beautiful and amazing and 
you shouldn't write them off. And even if it's not the people who are part of your scene, just the people you meet every day on the street, everybody's got something to say and also is willing to talk to you. And I think that engagement and inside Baltimore and your community is like the best thing you can do for yourself. Um, and coming with no biases as best you can, you know? Yeah. I think this place has a lot to offer and there's like opportunity here for people of any identity to prosper because I think we'll, Baltimore, the coolest thing about here is that people are open-minded. So if like you feel like maybe you might not be accepted, you probably will. And that's, that's important to remember. And there aren't a lot of cities like that. <clears throat> scene. Baltimore, in relation to musical influence, is fairly strong in all aspects. Lots of small bars, lots of small clubs that you can play in. Political climate um, helps me write lyrics because there's all the, the police brutality stuff and the Freddie Gray thing last April, so it was like a good inspiration. Music teachers are very good at BSA. And when I got there, I sucked. And now I can <laughs> play Careless <laughs> <Yeah>. Whisper. <laughs> We met at School of Rock, so a, like a year went by and I did this cover of Young the Giant's Cough Syrup and he messaged me on Facebook and was like, hey, that sounds good, can I put drums to it? It was us two in a band for a long time and it was drums and guitar. We were down here, we would just hang out and we were at first playing solely covers. We were playing just cover of this, cover of that, playing a block party here and there. After that, so then we played live lunch. So that it has another crowd, and then it just kept going and going and going. So it grad it began to build, and then we like exploded in likes just recently after the album. Born out yeah. yeah, as of yeah. this morning. So we had 300 likes in May, and then now we have a thousand and three likes. So TMD did did a did a lot did for us. They did a lot for us. <laughs> all right so um for hectic matter the new album um all the songs are named after places in baltimore so like the uh or things albums like the type the uh first track bloom is named after the beach house album uh just because that's kind of what i was listening to a lot while making it um while well, I was finishing the album right around when the um, the Baltimore riots were happening, and I, I guess kind of the chaos around that kind of influenced it a little bit. And um, actually probably more with the mixing of the album, because all the stuff had already been recorded up to that point, and the, the riots happened, and I was just kind of working with the producer, and yeah, just chaos. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like I'm kind of growing into the scene a little bit, becoming a little more recognized. Um, Ed Schrader, he's kind of been a big help. Um, getting to know him. Uh, Dan Deacon, too, I did some remixes for him. Oh, nice. Yeah, so I just kind of like how everyone is so welcoming and, like, since I'm kind of the new guy in the scene, like, everyone's been really kind of accommodating and just really helpful, so... I think it's kind of unique to Baltimore. Yeah. We need your help on it too. To the tail and I'm the dog. I think you're giving me the runaround. Been your fool for too damn long. Cause you've been giving me the runaround. Now I'm too tired to be first by by the truth. Find mama like you. Ease my mind. I'm not inclined to sit around and wonder what you do. Trying to buy some time. I got a notion, locomotion. Unless you can change my mind, I thought we'd work it out. But let's be realistic. <laughs> I've had enough. The jig is up. My pride is. 
worth much more than you suggested. I've had no the chick is up. I guess where I want to start when I when I think about how Baltimore has influenced me, um, boy, I could start with a lot of things. <laughs> I was in choirs and in um, as a as a kid, my my parents had me in a bunch of different uh, church choirs, Central Baptist Church. Uh, I might have been over at St. Matthew's Church for a little while. And then I got into the Baltimore Police Athletic League Youth Choir, called the PAL Choir. And that was directed by Officer Roderick Dodson. Um, and uh, he, would, uh, he would put us in the van and take us around to a bunch of gigs and, you know, we would play. And I was like 11, 12 years old. And, uh, uh, getting to understand get, what it was to perform in front of people, um, yeah, it, it was uh, it was a great experience, and it came from a police officer. So when I came back to Baltimore, uh, I uh, I was fortunate enough to start meeting uh, 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 some really cool people um, in the music scene with uh, with my friend and. He's a bass player, Ian Trussheim, and um, uh, I started going to open mics, and one open mic that I went to was Acoustic Thursdays on, uh, on Pratt Street, which is the longest running open mic in, uh, in Baltimore, uh, and uh, deservedly so, it's run by, uh, by Mark Evans, who's uh, a really, really talented um, I just call him just a singer in general. He can say anything, uh, but uh, he's very strong with R and B. But he can sing jazz just as good. And he's pretty much a superstar over in Eastern Europe for house music, for Baltimore club music scene. Oh yeah. Um, uh, so I went to uh, to his open mics a couple times, and I got to meet this guy Carter James. Carter. Uh, his name used to be James Carter, and he was the main drummer for Teddy Pendergrass uh, for forever. And he wrote a bunch of songs with Teddy, and and uh, um, today he's a singer-songwriter. And you can see him here at Terra Cafe a lot. Um, uh, he he um, <clears throat> really really helped me out with mentoring and and uh, having me open up for him. Um, back in the day, and also bought me uh, an acoustic guitar that you could plug into a PA system. I just had a regular one, uh, and he got that for me, and, and uh, boy, that was big. Uh, and anyway, from that scene, I got to meet a lot of people. Uh, there was a show on Washington Boulevard called The Dinner for Show, um, and uh, went with my friend Ian to this uh, this show called Dinner for Show on Washington Boulevard at this place, Club Reality. And uh, let's see who's there. Uh, uh, Black Brood and, uh, and Word Slave from uh, this group called Axiom. They were there, and you know, those you know, happen to be two of the most talented people in, in, that I've met in the scene. And, Mark Evans, who I already mentioned, uh, Jasmine Pope, who is now with J Pope and Funk Friday. I think that band was just getting started at that time. Now the the drummer in J Pope and Funk Friday also plays with me, and also Old Man Brown. Old Man Brown uh, is, is just a great, great, um, I guess R and B soul. Uh, I wouldn't call them a jam band, but they were in the jam band scene. Um, Is there a jam band scene in Baltimore? Oh, there's a big jam band scene in Baltimore. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the 8x10 is really the hub for that down in uh, Federal Hill. 
uh, yeah, uh, the bridge was the big band uh, for a long time, but um, uh, they don't do as many shows anymore. So now, Chris Jacobs, you'll remember that name, Chris Jacobs. He's he's already done uh, some great stuff, and he just keeps you know growing and growing. Um, more recently, um, he's he's been um, he's been you know helping me out doing. Uh, give me some opportunities and mentoring and I, I'm really learning a lot from uh, a lot of a lot of people and a lot of different areas uh, and that's one thing about Baltimore that I, I really want to stress um, it's uh, it's a smaller scene I guess definitely smaller than uh, New York or in LA or something but that means that we everybody has contact with each other okay where was I? I was talking about the scene. Um, yeah, so um, I, I've gotten to meet a lot of really talented people. Baltimore has a scene that can rival probably any scene anywhere in this country or in the world. Um, 